So we are currently at the Bill Clinton Library in Little Rock, Arkansas, because they have a 90s pop culture exhibit going on. They got all things like video games, board games like Pogs, and even trivia. So it may be a complete bust, but we thought might as well go check it out. Stick around. What is up internet, Retro here, and today we have a little bit different of a type of video. We are going on a tour of a 90s museum exhibit. This place is sweet. I'm talking everything 90s pop culture from, from the music, fashion, uh, movies, video games, and more, and it was a blast to go to this. I can't wait to show you this footage, uh, but guys, before we get into it, a couple things. The first is this. You're gonna notice that nobody is wearing a mask. Why are they not wearing a mask? It's because this is old footage from the beginning of the year. Uh, I actually remember the exact date. It was President's Day because uh, me and my buddy Carrie picked this particular day to go to the museum. And when we got there, they're like, oh, it's free admission today because it's President's Day. We had no idea it was President's Day, but it was like, okay, sweet. We got to get in for free. Um, but that is why, guys, this was just weeks before the pandemic hit uh, the US. Uh, so that is why you're not seeing anybody wear a mask. It's kind of weird looking back now and seeing this footage and not seeing anybody wear a mask because I'm just so used to that now. Uh, it's so strange. Uh, and then also, guys, before we get into it, if you are new to the channel and you do love all things 80s and 90s nostalgia, like retro video games, movies, toys, and more, please do me a favor and hit that freaking subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out on new weekly videos. Let's get into it. So the very first thing we see before we even get into the exhibit is this Friends set. Central Perk, the coffee shop on the iconic 90s show, Friends, such an amazing show. So this was all set up so you could actually take pictures. You'd sit on the couch and there was a Polaroid there and you could take pictures uh, and just hang out for a minute before you got into the exhibit. So it's pretty cool uh, to start out with this. All right, as we make our way into the actual museum exhibit, over here on this first wall to the right is a bunch of major events that happened in the 90s, pretty historic stuff. But honestly, I didn't really care about that. I wanted to see more of the pop culture stuff, so I skipped over that. And uh, this huge wall just kind of talked about some of the more notable things that happened in the 90s um, in terms of pop culture. The Nintendo Game Boy, guys. The OG Game Boy. I think it actually came out in 1989, but it gained more popularity in the early 90s. There is the cast from Friends. There is Elmo. I just recently made a, a video about the best-selling toys in the 90s, and Elmo uh, was, was definitely up there. There is Harry Potter. Kind of crazy to think that that came out in the 90s. Makes me feel old. I never think that came out in the 90s, or thought the, the books did, but, but they did. So here is some print media stuff, newspapers and magazines. Guys, who remembers magazines? I had like six different subscriptions when I was a kid, uh, and my favorite one, of course, was Nickelodeon Magazine. mission to get Nickelodeon magazine. It's packed with celebrity interviews and comics and puzzles and great stuff to collect. Oh, I love that magazine so much, guys. They're actually really hard to get nowadays. They're super expensive. I'm always on the lookout for them. So there's the Babysitter's Club and Goosebumps. I was never like a huge reader back in the day, but I definitely dabbled a little bit in Goosebumps. Now over here, guys, all these movie posters are crazy nostalgic for me. Uh, there was a mom and pop shop video store uh, in my hometown and I could actually buy those posters from them after the movies um, became like not, you know, new releases. So my room was full of, of movie posters. So this is something that's crazy, guys. I didn't even notice until later on. I think Carrie told me, he was like, dude, these, these clothes, are actually the ones that they wore, the actors wore in the film. So like that is what Dana Carvey wore in, in Wayne's World. The same thing with um, uh, that Forrest Gump stuff. Tom Hanks wore that. They, these are the actual clothes from the, from the movie. So we'll actually go back and check out those here in a bit. Here are some uh, models from Independence Day. I love that movie. One of the first like alien movies that I watched, Will Smith was the king back in the day. He still is the king, man. Will Smith is... Will Smith is the man. There is Toy Story, first Pixar movie ever made. Jurassic Park. I think Jurassic Park is like rated one of the top 90s movies of all times, if I'm not mistaken. 
And then over here, guys, <laughs> they're showing clips of movies. And this is one of my favorite clips from, from the movie Wayne's World. Hilarious. I like to play. Wayne's World is one of me and my wife's favorite movies. It is so funny. All right, so now we are back over by the clothes. When I finally realized that these clothes were the ones that were worn in the movies, I'm like, what? This was worn by Tom Hanks. That is crazy. Here are some clothes from A League of Their Own, an amazing baseball movie um, from the 90s. There are actually a lot of great 90s baseball movies. The Sandlot, Rookie of the Year, Little Big League, so many. All right, guys, here are some props from the movie Jurassic Park. Like these were used in the movie. It is so crazy to me. The bamboo cane. Man, Jurassic Park is such, such an amazing movie, guys. One, two, and three. I loved all of them. I even like the Jurassic World movies. You guys tell me down below if you are a fan of Jurassic Park. I don't know how you couldn't be, honestly. Uh, this is a sick Lion King leather watch. I would rock that thing right now. Give me that watch. I, I would rock that, man. The thing is is amazing. Here are some, some props that were used on the movie Men in Black. Guys, what what could Will Smith not do back in the day? He was he was a rapper. He was in huge TV shows, in movies. Uh, he even has a YouTube channel now. I mean, Will Smith does it all. Men in Black is a great movie. And then over here, guys, Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm not kidding when I tell you that it is one of my favorite movies of all time. I remember uh, a friend asked me what time, what was my favorite movie, and I said, Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> I just love that movie so much. And these are the clothes that Robin Williams wore in the movie. Could you make me a woman? Well, now I just want to go watch Mrs. Doubtfire. <sighs> Help is on the way, dear. I do a very, very terrible uh, Mrs. Doubtfire impersonation, obviously. All right, now we are moving over uh, into the television area. Guys, in fact, question of the video, what was your favorite TV show back in the 90s? There were so many, it's hard to pinpoint, but I would probably say for me, my favorite uh, show was Seinfeld. Me and my wife have watched through Seinfeld so, so many times. Uh, here are some Beavis and Butthead. It appears to be boxers i think it's kind of one of the first cartoons that was uh, more for adults that you could almost trick your parents and being like no this is for kids because it's a it's a cartoon right uh but no it definitely was not for young kids speaking of seinfeld there is the cast it's just it's just so good i watch it over and over again i'm like this is this is the best it's, it's the absolute best all right i think i just got a glimpse of family matters Pretty good as well. Love me some Urkel. And if you want to do the Steve Urkel dance, all you have to do is hitch up your pants, bend your knees, and stick out your pelvis. I'm telling you, baby, it's better than Elvis. <laughs> Family Matters, a timeless show, in my opinion. Uh, and who in the world knew there was Urkel cereal? Uh, had no idea that existed, but now I need to get on eBay immediately and purchase some to display proudly in the game room. There is Walker, Texas Ranger. Now that was not a show that I grew up with, but I know it was huge. And then Sex in the City came out in the 90s? Had to, been, had to have been like at the tail end of the 90s because I don't remember it being that old, but, but maybe it was. Uh, there are more of the glorious movie posters. Ugh, I love it. Right there is Apollo 13. I actually don't go over there. There's the helmet from the movie. That was the movie we watched in science class back in like eighth and ninth grade when it was when it was movie day at school. So I really love that movie. So here we are, music of the 90s. So I've been a musician for a long time since I was about 12 years old. And like most people, music means a lot to me. I mean, you know, you're talking about middle school and high school, your formative years in music was huge to me. You saw Weezer there, uh, you saw Red Hot Chili Peppers. So I was really, really big into 90s grunge. That was kind of like, it's kind of where I lived, man. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Silver Chair, Candlebox, like all of these uh, albums mean so much to me, guys. I mean, I, it, it takes me straight back, straight back to high school, man. Amazing times. So right here is an arcade cab that was supposed to be turned on and usable. It's supposed to have like thousands of games. I'm, I'm assuming it's some kind of like emulator or something, but I tried to actually get it to work 
off camera for a little bit too, but I, I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. I don't know I don't know if it was dead or, or what was happening, but um, I really wish that was on. So uh, so people could have played some old school games. Right here, we're gonna see uh, like a Pokemon poster. Guys, Pokemon in the 90s. The 90s Pokemon craze was huge and, and I was a part of it. Here we are looking at some toys and games. Now this is the section that you probably would all expect is, is my favorite section. Uh, I'm all about the toys in the games, man. That's what my whole channel is about. And there's the Super Soaker, some kind of anniversary edition that would be my dream to have in my game room. Here are some of the original Pokemon cards, it looks like. Uh, and you would assume they'd have some more holographics or any. I don't know if I even see any in there because it was all about the holographics, man. That's what, what us as kids wanted to pull back in the day. There's Trolls, Beanie Babies, Elmo. Uh, there's a Furby. I just made a video on the top selling 90s toys and all of those toys were a part of that. Go, go check it out if you've missed that. There's a hacky sack. I was not a hacky sack kid. I was more of a yo-yo kid. There was two camps uh, in my school. You either played with hacky sacks or you were a yo-yoer and I was on the yo-yo team. All right, getting into some video games. There's the OG PS1 Final Fantasy VII. That game literally changed my life. You see and, uh, 007 right there underneath that Super Nintendo. That, that kept bugging me. I'm like, why would they do that? Do you need an N64 in there? And they also didn't have uh, they also didn't have original Super Nintendo controllers. That, that bugged me too. There's uh, a poster, and then here is another. Just looks like a poster maybe from a Nintendo Power or something. Uh, and there's a Sega CD. Never had a Sega CD. Always wanted one. Never got one. There is a Discman. I'm not sure what that Rio thing is. I've never seen that before. Maybe you guys know, is it MP3 player or something? I didn't think there was MP3 players in the 90s, but maybe there was. And then right there, that Samsung DVD VHS combo was the one I had in my game room for years. And it finally died on me. It was a great, uh, a great little unit and then it died. So VHS and guys, who remembers Blockbuster? Right now, rent any movie from Blockbuster and you get a kid's film absolutely free. Great news for grown-ups. Make it a Blockbuster night. Man, the memories of renting movies and games at the movie rental store, whether it was Blockbuster or Movie Gallery or wherever, it was an, an entire experience and I miss those days. Here are some old school original cell phones. Golly, look how big those are. Things huge. There is a some kind of cool 90s aesthetic phone that I've never seen before, but the colors were really cool on that. All right, guys. So this mouse pad you're seeing right here is everything to me. Like, I want that so bad in my office. That is amazing. Here are some, some burn CDs, it looks like. Dashboard 95, uh, an old 90s Mac. I never used Apple products until like mid 2000s, so uh, I'm completely unaware uh, about or know very much about Apple products. Here's an old CD case with a bunch of CDs. I still have a CD case in my car and people make fun of me all the time, but hey, I, I still listen to CDs, so leave me alone. All right, getting into the fashion of the 90s. I wanna know from you guys, what was what were some of the fashion staples back in the day for you in the 90s? For me, it was my jeans. It was all about Jinko jeans, Zones jeans, and I think Urban Pipeline or something. And basically um, what I had to do to get new clothes in my town, because I lived in a very, very small town, there was a JCPenney storefront. Like there was no clothes at the store or at this little building. There were just, there was just the magazines and you would go in there and pick out what you wanted and then you would order from that storefront. So crazy that that's how it worked back then. But, but yeah, that's how it worked. And look at these clothes. Like. I, these are cool now. Like this is what people are wearing now. They're trying to recreate 90s retro clothes because they're the best, man. They're the best. Uh, and speaking of the best, this kid is the best. I love that dude. Look at him in his cool sweater, sweater jacket. All right, we are wrapping up the tour of the 90s museum exhibit with these trivia questions. Now this is cool. Uh, this is uh, another thing I did not notice until the whole thing was wrapped up and I was kind of walking out. I was like, hey, look look down here. There's questions, there's trivia questions. It was hard to take in everything when you're walking through uh, this nostalgia bomb. You're just like, whoa, look at that, look at that, look at this. Uh, Tamagotchi, of course, is that answer. If you guys know any of the answers to these, 
leave them down in the comments. But I thought this was a cool touch to add to, uh, to the exhibit, to put some questions down, to put some trivia questions down on the floor. Nice touch. Guys, I told you this exhibit was amazing. It actually went above my expectations of what I thought uh, we were going to experience by going to it. I think the thing that got me the most was the music. Seeing all those old albums like Candlebox, Silver Chair, Stone Temple Pilots. Guys, this is my, my high school years and it hit me. Uh, I wanna know from you guys, what was your favorite part of the museum? Was it the fashion? Was it the video games? Was it the music? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, guys, as always, thank you for, for hanging out, for watching the video. If you would like the video, it helps so much to get this kind of content out in front of people. Also, subscribe if you have not already. And until next time, peace.